In this video, we're comparing XLOOKUP and Filter across a variety of challenges to find out if Filter is actually a better lookup function than XLOOKUP. Now, if you're thinking, but Filter isn't a lookup function, then maybe after this video, you might think again. So if you're ready, let's get started. If we get really complex, we can create a formula that contains an X lookup or a filter to solve our scenario. But that's not our goal. Our goal is to be realistic. We're not trying to force X lookup or filter into every scenario. So in any of our tests, if the solution would be too advanced using an X lookup or a filter, we're just going to give it a fail. So now let's head over into our first test. Our first challenge is a basic lookup. In this scenario, we want to look up the value delta from our item column and return the value from the value column. And we want to look up the first instance of delta. So for x lookup, we type equals x lookup, opening bracket. The first argument is the lookup value. This is the item that we want to find. We have that here in cell G5, which is delta. The next argument is the lookup array. That's the range we want to look up from. We're going to look up from our item column. The next argument is return array. This is the corresponding range that we want to return the value from. We want to return from our value column. Now XLOOKUP has some optional arguments of if not found, match mode and search mode, but we're not looking at those in this video. So I can close that bracket, calculate, and that returns the value of 79, which is the correct value. Now let's undertake the same test for filter. In cell J5, I'll type equals filter, opening bracket. We have the array argument. This is the range of cells that we want to return the value from. We want to return from the value column. Then we have our include argument. This is the test that determines which values are returned. So we want to test our item column and we want to return where the item is equal to delta. Filter also has an optional argument of if empty and we're not using that in this scenario. I can close that bracket at the end and calculate and that now returns all of the instances of delta. But because this is a basic lookup scenario and we just want the first instance of delta, we need to wrap filter in another function. We're going to use the take function and we want to take the first value from there. That now returns the correct result of 79. Now take isn't the only option we could choose. We could also use index. That would return the same value or we could also use choose rows. And that would also return exactly the same value. So how have they scored in this scenario? I think we can say that X lookup is easier to use for a basic lookup than the filter alternative. Now it's time to look at our second challenge, which is to look up all instances of a value. Here we are back in Excel. And the truth is, if we want to perform this with X lookup, it is exceptionally complex. So we're going to give this a fail. But for filter, it's easy. We've seen this already equals filter, opening bracket, our array is the value. And then for our include argument, we want the values where item is equal to delta. I'll close the bracket and calculate. And that gives us all of the lookup values for delta. So for this test, who's the winner? I think we can say that filter is the winner. That's what filter is designed to do. For looking up all instances, filter beats X lookup. For our next challenge, we want to return the nth instance of a value. For example, here we want to look up delta, but we want to return the second instance of delta. Now we know that X lookup only returns the first instance. And if we want to solve this scenario with X lookup, it's too complex. So let's give that a fail. But for filter, we already know what to do. Equals filter. We want to return our value where our item is equal to delta. If we close that and calculate, it spells out all of those results, but we only want the second result, which is pretty much the same as getting the first result. 
Let's edit our formula and we're going to use index and we want the index of two. If we close that and calculate, that now gives us the second lookup value for delta. For this scenario, who's the winner? I think we can clearly see that filter is once again the winner. If we want the nth lookup, with filter it's easy, with x lookup it would be too complex, so it's a fail. For our next scenario, we want to look at the nth largest item. What we want is the second largest number for delta. Unfortunately, this is too complex for x lookup, so we're going to give that a fail. But for filter, this is easy. Equals filter, opening bracket. The values that we want to return are from our value column. And we want those where item is equal to delta. I'll close that bracket and calculate. Now these values appear in the order in which they appear in our value column. If we want the second largest item, we need to sort these values. Let's add the sort function. Sort, opening bracket. We want to sort on column one, and we want to sort in descending order. So that will be minus one. I'll close the bracket and calculate. We now have our numbers from largest to smallest. And as we've seen before, we can simply use index, and we want the second largest item. And when we calculate, that returns 61, which is the second largest value for delta. In this scenario, I think we can say that filter is definitely the winner because trying to do this with xlookup would just be too complex. So once again, xlookup gets a fail. I just want to interrupt things here to tell you about our free course, which is called Modern Excel Formulas. It goes deep into understanding how Excel's calculation engine really works. So if you want to sign up for that free course, you'll find links in the descriptions box below. For our next challenge, we want to see how these functions behave when we have multiple lookup conditions. We want to look up where our item equals delta and our region equals north. Now there are two ways to achieve this with xlookup. Let's try the first, equals xlookup, opening bracket, and we want to look up the value of delta and, I'll then use a spacer character, and north, and we want to look that up from item, the same spacer character to represent the column, and then region. We then have the value that we want to return, that is from our value column. When we close that and calculate, that now returns the value of delta and north. The other way to achieve this is by using an array calculation. Equals x lookup, opening bracket. Now, because we're going to perform an array calculation inside our lookup array argument, and that argument will return one if it matches or zero if it doesn't match, therefore we want to use one for our lookup value. We want to look up where, opening bracket, item is equal to delta, and we want to have another condition with an and condition, so that's multiply, where our region is equal to north. I'll then close that condition. That argument there will return one or zero. Then for our return array, we want to return our value. I'll close the bracket at the end and calculate, and once again, that returns 79, which is delta and north. Let's do the same thing with our filter function. Equals filter, opening bracket. We have our array, which is still our value, and then we have our condition. And we're going to perform a similar type of calculation to our second example of xlookup. We want to look up where item is equal to delta, and we want an AND condition, so that's multiply, where region is equal to north. I will close that bracket at the end, close another bracket and calculate, and that returns 79. Now this works because we only have one instance of our item and region combination. If we had duplicate items, it would return those in a spill range. Therefore, we may need to wrap this in an index function to make sure that we always return that first item. In this challenge, how did they perform? Well, it's a tricky one, because in both scenarios they needed some more advanced syntax. Therefore, I'm going to call this scenario a draw. 
In the next challenge, we're going to see how these functions perform when we want to look up multiple values at the same time. Here, we want to look up Bravo and Delta. We want to look up both of those values and return both of them inside a single calculation. We're going to start with xlookup equals xlookup, opening bracket. The lookup value is going to be Bravo and Delta. We want to look up from our item column and we want to return from our value column. When we close that bracket and calculate, we now get both of those values. The first instance of Bravo is 95 and the first instance of Delta is 79. Let's now try the same thing with filter equals filter. We have our array, which is our values. Then we have our include argument and we want that where item is equal to Bravo and Delta. Let's close that and calculate. Yeah, it doesn't work. And that's because the include argument expects a single vector or a single column of true or false values. And we can't achieve that in this scenario. Therefore, for this challenge, we can say that xlookup is the winner because for filter, we got a big fail. For our last challenge, we want to look up all instances of multiple values. That means if we look up multiple values, we want to return all the values, not just the first value. Here you can see we want Bravo and Delta, and we want to look up all the values from our table. Now we can't achieve this with xlookup, so that's going to get a big fail. But we can achieve this with filter equals filter, opening bracket, our array continues to be our value column. Now to get the values that we want to look up, we need to use a reasonably tricky calculation. We want to check the X match of where our lookup value, which is going to be our item, does that match our Bravo and Delta list. I'll then close that bracket. Now this will return either a value if that item does match, or it returns NA if the item doesn't match. Therefore, what we're going to do is to wrap this in an isNumber function. If we use isNumber, that will then return true or false, which will be used by our filter function to return all of the matching values. And you can see here that we have all the values for Bravo and Delta. So we can say that for this challenge, filter is definitely the winner because xlookup was not able to achieve that scenario. Now it's time to reveal the winner and the winner is you because you now know when to use each function, when xlookup works best and when filter works best. With Excel, it's all about understanding our scenario and then picking the functions which best match our scenario. Yes, we can have favorite functions, but if they don't do what we want in a specific scenario, then we shouldn't hold on to them just because they are our favorite functions. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.